Hello children, I'm your teacher Ghazala Kamran and this is your English literature lesson. The topic is Robinson Crusoe's story. This is a poem and before we start reading the poem, here's a little introduction of the poet. So the poem Robinson Crusoe's story is written by Charles Edward Carroll. He was born in 1841 and he lived till 1920. He was an American author of children's literature. Carroll followed in his father's footsteps and became a successful businessman and stockbroker. He wrote humorous poetry much like that of Lewis Carroll and he wrote primarily to amuse his children. Lewis Carroll was a famous English children's literature writer and he had written a very famous book Alice in Wonderland maybe you have read the story so he was considered the American equivalent of Lewis Carroll Charles was the father of poet and humorist Guy Wetmore Carroll his son Guy Wetmore Carroll was a humorist he wrote funny writings and because his father was writing funny poetry for him in his childhood he grew up to be a writer also. In this point the author imagines that he is Robinson Crusoe, the main character in a famous novel by Daniel Defoe. So before we begin reading the poetry let's first read the words and their meaning, the words which we are going to encounter in the poem. So the words list is here. Number one Piccadilly Daisy. This is the name of the ship Robinson Crusoe was on. This is the ship which sank in the novel. EMM. M is an English old short English word which means them. Population. Here it means person. Tavern means an inn. A place to stay for the night. Cavern means a cave. Stew or stews. It is a dish of meat, fish or vegetables that is cooked by slow simmering. Lard means fat or grease. Prickly pears. Fruit from the cactus of the same name. Gizzard or gizzards means the stomach of birds. Tanned to convert animal skin into leather by treating it with tannin. Diversion, amusement, gravel, small stones, ornamental, fancy, and decorative. Okay, now we are ready to start reading the poem. If you have your books with you, open up page 88 and let's start reading Robinson Crusoe's story by Charles E. Carroll the night was thick and hazy when the Piccadilly Daisy carried down the crew and captain in the sea and I think the water drowned them for they never never found them and I know they didn't come ashore with me. Oh, it was very sad and lonely when I found myself the only population on this cultivated shore. But I've made a little tavern in a rocky little cavern and I sit and watch for people at the door. I spent no time in looking for a girl to do my cooking and I'm quite a clever hand at making stews. But I had that fellow Friday just to keep the tavern tidy and to put a Sunday polish on my shoes. I have a little garden that I'm cultivating lard in as the things I eat are rather tough and dry. For I live on toasted lizards prickly pears and parrot gizzards and I'm really very fond of beetle pie. 
The clothes I had were furry and it made me fret and worry when I found the moths were eating off the hair and I had to scrape and sand them and I boil them and I tan them till I got the fine Morocco suit I wear. I sometimes seek diversion in a family excursion with a few domestic animals you see and we take along a carrot as refreshment for the parrot and a little can of jungle berry tea. Then we gather as we travel bits of moss and dirty gravel and we chip off little specimens of stone and we carry home as prizes funny bugs of handy sizes just to give the day a scientific tone. If the roads are wet and muddy we remain at home and study for the goat is very clever at the sum and the dog instead of fighting studies ornamental writing while the cat is taking lessons on the drum. We retire at 11 and we rise again at 7 and I wish to call attention as I close to the fact that all the scholars are correct about their collars and particular in turning out their toes. So this was the poem Robinson Crusoe's story and what we have learned about the poem after reading is is that the poem comprises of nine stanzas. There are six lines in each stanza and that makes the poem is of 54 lines altogether. In the poem the speaker is the poet and he's speaking as Robinson Crusoe. So we can say that Robinson, Robinson Crusoe is telling his story. This is a humorous poem. A humorous poem is one when a poet writes a funny rhyming poem. And here the poet uses nonsense words to add humor in the poem. The theme is the story of Robinson Crusoe. Each stanza tells what happens to Robinson Crusoe as in the original story. And the rhyme scheme of the poem is that the po poem has nine stanzas to represent the 29 years of Robinson Crusoe's stay in the island where he was marooned. And the rhyming scheme is A, A, B, C, C, B. So how do we determine the rhyming scheme? And how are these letters desc describing it? You see, we look at the rhyming words, the last words of every verse. If they rhyme together, we give them the same letter. So the first and the second lines are rhyming together, hazy, daisy. So both the lines get same letter A A A then we see that the third line has the last letter C and the sixth line also has a rhyming word here me C and me rhyme together so here first and second line have the letter A, third line has the letter B and also the sixth line. Now we come to the line number four and line number five. Here again the last letters are rhyming, the last words are rhyming M, M. So these get the same letters C. So in this way we determine the rhyming scheme of a poem and we describe them with capital letters like here we have done A A B C C B okay now we before we start describing explaining stanza wise if you people do not know the story of Robinson Crusoe here is a gist of the story if you know it then you will better appreciate the poem so Robinson Crusoe is a novel written by Daniel Defoe and the story is that Robinson Crusoe is a doctor hired to work on a ship 
the ship gets wrecked by striking a rock near an island in a stormy uh, night so uh, Robinson Crusoe finds himself on the island in the morning and he is the lone survivor he manages to reach the shipwreck somehow which is very difficult because the shipwreck is somewhat uh, in the shallow waters but away from the shore there he finds some things in the shipwreck which help him to survive he starts living in a cave he explores the island and finds food bearing trees and animals and once he helps a man left on the island by his fellow cannibals and he's probably left there as a punishment alone on an island to die the grateful man becomes his servant and he names him man friday because that is the only thing he knows about this cannibal that he is a man and he found him on a friday robinson crusoe had been marking weeks and days and years to keep track of how much time he's spending on the island so he knows that it's a friday so through the years he learns to cultivate rice and wheat and even manages to make bread for himself and finally after living on the island for 28 years he is rescued and finally goes back to his home with man friday so this is a small story of the original novel and now let's look at the stanza and see what they mean so the first stanza is the night was thick and hazy when the piccadilly daisy carried down the crew and captain in the sea and I think the water drowned them for they never never found them and I know they didn't come ashore with me here the poet is telling his story as Robinson Crusoe he was on a ship named Piccadilly Daisy the ship sinks and Crusoe is the only survivor nobody else comes on the shore this is how Crusoe knows that everyone is dead how sad so in stanza 2 we read oh it was very sad and lonely when I found myself the only population on this cultivated shore but I've made a little tavern in a rocky little cavern and I sit and watch for people at the door so here Crusoe is telling that it's a deserted island, no signs of life for miles, yet the poet is trying to strike a note of normalcy as if people walk in all the time. In the beginning, Crusoe finds it very difficult to live all alone and starts living in a cave. Here the poet is saying that he thought his little cave was an inn and he used to sit at the mouth of the cave pretending that he was an inn owner waiting for his customers. Okay, stanza number three. I spent no time in looking for a girl to do my cooking, as I'm quite a clever hand at making stews. But I had that fellow Friday just to keep the tavern tidy and to put a Sunday polish on my shoes. So in stanza number three, we see that the poet or Crusoe needs the help of someone here he the poet says that he wanted to find a girl as usually the task of cooking is related with females luckily he finds help in the form of man friday here again crusoe is living his life on the island as a normal englishman here crusoe says that he needed man friday's help to clean the cave and polish his shoes the shoes were usually polished and readied for attending the Sunday church service. Though on the island there is no church, but still they are mentioned here to make it seem normal as in everyday English life. So stanza number four. I have a little garden that I'm cultivating lard in. As the things I eat I rather tough and dry. For I live on toasted lizards prickly pears and parrot gizzards and I'm really very fond of beetle pie. Here Crusoe is saying that he gets his food from around the island, toasted lizards, 
parrot intestines, prickly pears, beetles, lard from his garden, carrot, jungle berry tea, stews, etc. Now, what's special about mentioning all these things is that Rousseau says that he is cultivating lard, but everyone knows that it is not possible. Here, the impossible things and actions are mentioned to amuse the children. Such words are called nonsense words. Here, eating toasted lizards, intestines of birds and insects are not possible, but are mentioned here as food. So when children read such point, they find it very amusing, and I'm sure you did too, because I did. Okay, next stanza, stanza number five. The clothes I had were furry and it made me fret and worry when I found the moths were eating off the hair and I had to scrape and sand them and I boiled them and I tanned them till I got the fine Morocco suit I wear. In this stanza, Crusoe tells that the animal skin he is wearing gave him lots of trouble. The poet is using nonsense words again by saying that moths were eating the hair on the skin he was wearing as clothes. So Crusoe scrapes and sands his clothes, that is he scrubs the animal hide he uses to clothe himself to be rid of hair and insects. And finally he gets the polished smooth suit he is wearing which is like the very expensive Morocco suit, like expensive leather suit. So next stanza, stanza number six, I sometimes seek diversion in a family excursion with a few domestic animals you see and we take along a carrot as a refreshment for the parrot and a little can of jungle berry tea. Now the poet is trying to show normalcy in his island life. He even goes for picnic just as any other English family does. His family consists of his pets and his family are his goat, dog and carrot and while picnicking he even packs a lunch. His picnic lunch includes a carrot for the parrot and a tea of jungleberry, a made up name for himself. Next stanza is stanza number 7. Then we gather as we travel bits of moss and dirty gravel and we chip off little specimens of stone and we carry home as prizes funny bugs of handy sizes just to give the day a scientific tone. So while on a picnic Crusoe tries to appear scientifically knowledgeable by gathering samples of stones and bugs this serves to be a distraction and a source of entertainment for his island life. Next stanza is stanza number 8. If the roads are wet and muddy, we remain at home and study, for the goat is very clever at a sum. And the dog, instead of fighting, studies ornamental writing, while the cat is taking lessons on the drum. So just imagining the goat doing sums, the dog is learning to write and the cat is playing drum. This, all this imagination is very funny and very amusing for the children and it paints a very lively, nice picture of a family, busy family life. So here Crusoe, Friday and their animal friends are given the personality traits of normal people. If it is raining they stay at home instead of going out the goat the dog and cat are like normal children the goat can do sums the dog does fancy writing and the cat learns to play a drum crusoe says that they are very particular about their cleanliness and personal hygiene so whenever it's wet and muddy they do not go out so not only they are like children they are like very very good children Okay, next stanza, stanza number 9. We retire at 11 and we rise again at 7 and I wish to call attention as I close to the fact that all the scholars are correct about their colors and particular in turning out their toes. So like any normal family, they go to sleep at 11 
and wake up in the morning at 7. Now before ending his story, Crusoe wants to tell one last thing and that is that all the wise people are correct in saying whatever they say about the callers and their habit of curling out their toes of Crusoe's four-legged family members. What is it that they actually say is not told? That exact information is not given here. So that is left for your imagination, I guess. So what do you say about the colors of animals? And why do you think they turn out their toes like whenever they are sleepy and they are just strengthening their legs around they turn out their toes so why do they do it okay these were the nine stanzas of the poem and here is a summary now a summary is when you tell the whole story in a small paragraph you shorten up the lesson or the poem and just tell the main story so as we have read the nine stanzas, we know what the story of the poem is, what story is Robinson Crusoe telling. So here is the summary that I have written. You can write a summary on your own also. When we read this, you can see how easily it's done. Robinson Crusoe's story, summary. This poem describes the scene of a deserted island. Robinson Crusoe is there telling his story. He tells how he was marooned on this island after his ship was wrecked and he was the only survivor. He started living in a cave. Then he learned to prepare food for himself and he found help in the form of a man called Man Friday. He started cultivating and used animals for food and their skin for clothes. He kept some animals at pets too. He tried to live life as much like a normal Englishman as possible. So this is what the whole story is about. Okay, now we have read the poem, we have seen the explanation stanza wise and we know the summary of the poem. Now here I have two questions for you. Let's see if you can answer these questions. Question number one. Robinson Crusoe had a small family on the island. What detail would you use from the poem to agree or disagree with this statement? So do you think Robinson Crusoe has a, had a family on the island? What information do we get from the poem? And question number two. After reading the poem, what impression do you get about Crusoe's life on the island? What kind of a life was he living? Okay, here I have the answers, but you can write your own answers. Always remember when we are studying a poem, we are not given exact answers, like exact facts are not there. You have to think of the answers yourself. So whatever you think, be confident that it is the correct answer. Okay, so I have written these answers just as a reference. You can think of some other answer and that would be equally correct okay so question one was Robinson Crusoe had a small family on the island what detail would you use from the point to agree or disagree with this statement what is told in the poem that tells you that he had a family or that this is incorrect so my answer is that I agree with the statement because he goes on excursions with his helper Friday and his domestic animals he treats his animals like family and knows their unique qualities. Question number two. After reading the poem, what impression do you get about Crusoe's life on the island? What kind of a life was he living? So my answer is, I think that Crusoe worked very hard to lead a comfortable life on the island. He grew food, kept a house, made his own clothes and tried to have a good time even though he was miles away from his home. Okay. Now we come to the homework, you have to do exercise A, B and C, they are on the book pages, let's see, let's check them, yes, pages 91 to 93 in your English literature copy, 
this work will be checked and marks will be given once we once you come back to school so here is exercise a there are seven question answers write short easy answers your own answers do not be afraid to make mistakes when you come back i will check your work and we will make corrections whatever will be needed so exercise b there are very easy questions here you have to write short answers there so use small short easy sentences exercise c you have to find the meaning of these words and in question number 2 you have to find what information you get about these things goat sailor food domestic help routine dog morocco suit crusoe's house and collecting okay now it's time to end the lesson thank you for your attention keep studying at home bye bye